Well, it's, it's huge seeing a kid want to come back to class, want to come in during their lunch, want to finish a project. Well, 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 my friends, you have found me at a high school. Yeah, I'm at a high school, which I kind of dropped out of, went back to, came out of. Uh, yeah, it's a confusing story. You don't even want to know. But at that time, mathematics was quite difficult for me. And somehow, through time, reputation, and being a part of manufacturing, it's grown on me. But in high school, I really struggled. Now, here at Pine Bush, I'm with my buddy Mike. Mike has a unique way of educating his students, which I think I probably would have thrived in as well. And maybe many of you will also. So for those of you listening that are at other schools that might want to implement this style of teaching, pay close attention because I think it really works. Mike, let's talk about mathematics, how you have changed the way the learning process goes from a 2D to a 3D to a hands-on and all of the pieces where I was just writing in a catalog going, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, A, B, B, A, B, you know, that's how we yep. did it back in the day, filling in the bubbles, right? Let's learn about how you teach. So I think one of the things there are is students see math very disconnected from their everyday life. Um, quite the opposite, geometry is everywhere, math is everywhere, designed in everything. Um, so for me, one of the big things is for having the students really realize like, hey, this phone I'm holding, this object I'm holding, it's designed for a purpose. Even the chair that you're sitting in really has a purpose. I like that you say that because how many times, I mean, you're a teacher, so you've probably heard it far more than me. I've even said it a bunch of times. Where's this gonna help me in the real world? Have you heard that from your students? Where's math gonna help me in the real world? All the time, all the time. And you try to give them examples, but it's not until they actually get to play, touch, and feel those examples do they really understand what's going on. So speaking of feel, touch, and play with those examples, you have some parts here beside you, right? You have some mm -hmm. paperwork, which is two-dimensional, but very creative pieces, and it looks like maybe some 3D printed parts as well. How do you utilize these aspects of education to allow them a, either a quicker learning or a connection to something that wasn't being learned at all previously? Yeah, so a lot of times traditional um, paper and pencil, everything is very flat. Right, so we're trying to teach a three-dimensional world on a flat piece of paper. So instead of doing that, well, we could take advantage of these 3D printers and so forth and really take the learning to the next level. For example, we have state exams that have all sorts of different shapes on them. Here's an example of one that has from literally one of our state exams. So this is a three-dimensional object and there's a hole inside. Well, based on a two-dimensional object, it's really hard to see that that hole really goes all the way through to the other side where now we can have a kid understand, they can hold it, they can measure it. This was literally designed to the specific specifications of what that problem was. So if I'm looking at that, Mike, and may I see it as well? Yep. Um, back when I was in school, this would have been kind of sitting like this uh, with some straight lines, solid lines, and then with some dots to uh, uh, kind of showcase what's on the opposite side yep. or the bottom side. And that's what we're showing in real life right now. This would have been so much easier for me to do. Absolutely. But you have some other parts here, Mike, where we're talking about overall volume as well. And when I'm looking at a piece of paper, I go, uh, I'm a little bit confused. But you've now also 3D printed these parts to help us understand how that works as well, right? Yes, exactly. So we have a couple different objects here. You can see that the base is of different shapes. Here we got another one. Here's another one and so forth. So what happens is um, a lot of the students see these different shapes, whether they're rounded, whether they're straight, whether they're curved, and they get a different feel of, you no, know, maybe the volumes are different, maybe the volumes are the same. And again, given on a flat piece of paper, where now we can 3D print them again, and now we can have the students understand that if the base here is the same and the heights there are the same, it doesn't matter how the object gets there, whether it's a curve or a straight, they're gonna still have the same volume. And then more on top of it, we print it so that it's hollow, so that they can use volume using water, fill these up, move one to the other, and then realize that they're all the same. Mike, it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, coming from a style of learning where I'm very hands-on, uh, this would have helped me immensely. As you are a teacher and you see all the different ways of learning that come through your facility, do you find there are a lot of students that prefer this way, but some people prefer the traditional as well? How's that balance work? Because you seem to be really creative, and you really seem to care about your students as well and pushing them to the next level of education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely need a balance because there are some students that still learn very well traditionally, um, but then you still have the students that need these moments and things like that. And what you find out is the more ways you allow them to kind of explore, the more that they realize that their understanding is very similar to somebody else's. You know, and it really helps those lower end students who struggle to realize that, hey, I can also provide some information for somebody that's higher and, and does much better. Well, stepping aside from 
the mathematics side of things, just a small sidestep. Mm -hmm. You seem like your heart goes into this as well. You seem like you care about your students. Would you like to convey that message to everyone watching right now going, this is why I get creative. This is why I want to do things. This is why people are getting jobs straight out of high school. This is why we're finding successes in graduation rates that we didn't used to see. This is maybe for some of the kids that used to be struggling. Now they're finding a way to succeed. When it comes to your passion, your heart, your lifestyle, your mm -hmm. dedication to what you do, what does this all mean to you when you see that kind of success? Well, it's, it's huge seeing a kid want to come back to class, want to come in during their lunch, want to finish a project. I mean, this right here, this project I had here, the kids used it in many different ways, but it was so cool to see some of my students that like literally ran to get out of class normally as the start of the year, they were coming in to get help after. They wanted to finish this project. They wanted to make two copies so you can give one to their mom, to their dad, you know, things like that. And that's all that matters. Like, that's all that matters. You know, if you leave, Biggest thing is saying like, hey, I remember when I made this, you know, back in 10th grade. And that's what's important. That's why we're here. Absolutely agree, my friends. This is Pine Bush High School. This is why we're here. This is Mike, the creative way to do math. If you're one of those folks out there, like when I was younger, that says, I'm never going to see this math again. Why do I need to learn it? Guys, gals, geometry is everywhere. Mathematics are everywhere, believe it or not. So something like this is very helpful. Mike, thank you for conveying thank this you. message. Thank you for helping the students here at Pine Bush as well. You are an incredible interviewee and it's been thank a you. pleasure learning from you.